This is Bebo from the Order of the Overflow, and I am the author of the Upload It Challenge. Let's start by taking a look at the challenge itself, and then I'll walk you through my solution and a little bit about the infrastructure. So as you can see, Upload It, this, the challenge is still going. We have about 28 minutes left in the competition. There are 104 solves. Uh, I think this ended up being the most solved challenge. Uh, well, it's not over yet, so I can't say this definitively. Uh, but most solved challenge, that's not one of the trivial welcome video or welcome to DC 2020 calls. You're given an app.py, a store.py, and a URL. And you'll note if you click on this URL, it doesn't do anything. Kind of interesting. Um, that was by design so that you would hopefully go and try to open up this URL in curl and take a look at the headers. You get a 204 no content here. You get a little bit of information about server Gunicorn 2000, and you see that it's served up via HA proxy. And if you make a few requests, you should see this served by number change. So you know you're dealing with, um, there are more than one application server, a load balancer, um, not terribly important for that part. The two files you get are app.py and store.py. These are the same. And store.py, I try to be really, really explicit that there's nothing of value here. Um, the local store is so that you could more easily uh, load up these files locally, like in a Docker container, however you want, um, and not need access to an S3 bucket. I needed the S3 store because I had multiple instances, so I needed to persist the state of files that you write so that any instance of the application server could access it. And to be explicitly clear, I said, these are the permissions that are needed on the bucket and the only permissions that are granted. Um, so you don't try to be like, oh, maybe I could list all the files in S3. Uh, well, there's no permissions for that. App.py really is only here. I mean, this is what it's running, but it tells you the API. You have a get file, which is files GUID, get, and then you can post to files and you use a header to specify the GUID. Um, one person pointed out that there is a, you could add some new lines, I guess, in between um, at the end, but that I think would just be treated as the next line of an HTTP header, so it's not terribly value, valuable. Uh, otherwise, uh, I kept this short intentionally to be like, there's, there's no vulnerability here. There's nothing you can exploit in Flask itself um, or in this application. or as far as we know, unless there's a vulnerability that, you know, zero day or something. Okay. Um, so if you do a little searching around, the this ends up being a HTTP desync type attack or um, request smuggling redefined. If you might come across this particular article, desync attacks request smuggling reborn. Sorry, and this was actually uh, given as a talk at DEF CON. Um, last year on this particular talks, and I found this actually pretty fa fascinating and decided let's let's write a vulnerability on it. So you get some interesting information, Gunicorn 2020. Uh, if you do some searching around, you might come across this article, HTTP desync attacks with Python and AWS. So there is sort of a way to do this with AWS as a front end. Uh, that's not what I chose. But the main thing is, is I needed a particular version of Gunicorn that was vulnerable and you'll see you need to have greater than 20.0.2 um, to not be vulnerable to this particular attack. And you need a vulnerable front end. So that's the other part of it. There's HA proxy, but you're not given the particular version. Uh, it turns out if you issue a bad request, you get a response directly from the front end server. It never talks to the back end. And I spelled out this particular HA proxy version um, there. Now that's not super trivial, but you could skip this step and just say, well, let's assume that HA proxy is vulnerable. So there was a couple of hints to try to get you on uh, the fact that there was some request smuggling. And if you do the HA proxy part, you'll get this article that talks about HA request smuggling, HA proxy, HTTP request smuggling, and it lists 119.10, or 1910, sorry, uh, as a vulnerable version. Okay, this even talks about how how you attack it, which is by using uh, a vertical tab um, or either the form feed to, to get past and you set a content length and then 
uh, HA proxy uses the content length header, Unicorn uses the transfer encoding header, and then you have this, this particular uh, issue available. Okay, so let's just verify that it's working. There's live traffic right now, probably not as much as there once was, but let's see if, if this works. And there's my whole string here that I'm running. You can see, um, okay, that time it, it didn't work. So probably the request after it was not the invoker script, but I run it again and uh, that time it did work. So we have the flag right there. Um, so you'll see the slash B here. You see the particular content length. You need the right content length to enumerate the entire request from the invoker. But if you got the wrong one, you should see part of it and then you increment it until you get to the right size. Um, and you'll see that I'm specifying the GUID. So I want to request, I'm, I want to save the subsequent request into this particular file. Um, and then this was the request from the invoker that was hijacked or stolen, smuggled, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, if we look at scripts attack, uh, you can, this, this code is all open source. Um, this is the main payload here. I just have a few replacements uh, in order to, to do that. You send that data. You calculate, I calculate a little bit of offsets. I have some stuff to connect locally for testing. Um, and then I choose the GUID. And then at the end, I actually request that GUID back out at the end. Okay, so that's the attack. The invoker, if you want to see that. Let me just open everything here. Um, it has the flag. It sleeps a certain amount of time. I've had to vary this throughout the challenge. And all it does is really write out a file. Um, and it calls the load balancer directly. Um, so inside the container, the load balancer is running on 8080. If it were to call Gunicorn directly, then this wouldn't work because it would be bypassing the vulnerable piece. And it just does that forever inside the container that I can run multiple instances of the container. Okay, so if you want to run this locally, let's look at the readme, upload it. Um, there's Docker file that allows you to build this. So we can build this particular thing um, and then we can run it and I can show you that we can exploit the, the local version too. And then I'll go over uh, a couple of the necessary pieces. So let's run this. Okay, so it's running. Um, it uses supervisor, so kind of a um, an anti-pattern is to run multiple processes inside a single Docker container, but it ended up being easier. So we have Gunicorn, the application server, running, serving the Flask app. HA proxy is the front end to Gunicorn, so these two together have the vulnerability, and the invoker is the script, which makes requests periodically against that, that stack. Um, so it's running right now. By default, it'll locally run uh, one request every two seconds. And if we run scripts attack in local mode, uh, you'll see the attacker ran, and then I set the user agent to hacked, and then the invoker runs, and then we get the particular output out. Um, so the hope was that you would take these files, you would try to set up your own environment, which may look similar uh, to this. So here I'm installing you know, Python on top of Ubuntu, curl supervisor. You didn't need all of this, of course. Um, but Gunicorn, this particular version. And then I don't have this build HA proxy. I need a specific version of HA proxy. Um, so that binary exists. Um, in the bin directory uh, for that particular version, but it was one nine, whatever the version I listed as. Um, and so that's copied in and then the invoker runs. So that's the Docker file. You'll note that there are a couple extra files I need. The Gunicorn config has some logging information. Um, nothing too important here. HA proxy, um, if you, reread this article it talks about forward um 
this HTTP reuse always. This exacerbates the problem um, to make sure that new connections don't require a new backend connection. So it uses um, uh, keep alive HTTP between the front end and the back end. And this is where I added the custom. So every response gets HA proxy. And then this is just so you can see which host name was serving, uh, which host was running that instance of HA proxy, not super useful. Um, and then I overwrote all of the custom error logs that HA proxy would directly send so that it would include the specific version because HA proxy doesn't reveal that by default. And that's HA proxy. Um, was there anything else? Supervisor, not super useful. You can look through that. I separated stuff out into different users in case somebody broke out of the container. Um, and I believe that's pretty much it. The uh, I deployed this using Elastic Container Services in AWS on top of Fargate. So I was able to adjust pretty easily the number of instances running. And yeah, really it's just crafting the right URL, or the right request, and hoping that the invoker runs immediately after at periods when there was high volume that didn't completely work out as intended. Um, but I increased the number of instances and the frequency of the invoker, and then things worked well. Oh, if you want to run this, I made one change to make this work. So if you wanted to run this, uh, if we look at git diff, uh, I made some changes to the readme, but the main thing is you have to comment out the S3 store because it'll complain about not having a bucket environment variable, and you have to uncomment local store, unless you want to actually fill those in. Um, oh, and then I just made some changes so I could run it against the remote one and the local one at the same time. So all of that will be on the uh, repo that you can get from the link in this video. All right, well, I hope you all had fun. Uh, I'm happy to take questions um, or comments about this challenge. And yeah, keep on hacking. Great, thanks.